In the context of recent efforts to eradicate memory of our past, like the city of Victoria's removal of a statue to Sir John A. Macdonald, William Faulkner's observation has never been more apt. The past is never dead. It is not even past. Truer words were never spoken about Sir John, Canada's principal founder and first prime minister. Those who think that Sir John's only legacy to Canada is a few statues around the country and a poor likeness on the $10 bill, do not understand that the very fabric of this country is woven of threads drawn from this man's strategic and tactical genius. Out of the unpromising materials of thinly populated and mutually antagonistic British colonies, unloved by London, coveted by Washington, riven by racial and linguistic disputes, he distilled the ideas, the politics, and the institutions that today place us at the forefront of the nations of the world. We are his legacy. In his new history of Canada, Conrad Black does not exaggerate when he asserts that had Canada not been so small at the outset, Macdonald's feat of nation building would undoubtedly have won him the acclaim history accords to the other great statesmen of the 19th century, Lincoln, Palmerston, Disraeli, Gladstone, Salisbury, Cavour, and Bismarck. There is still time for history to be revised. Much as he admired the United States and its founder's vision, and by the way, he carried his copy of the Federalist Papers with him to the conferences that led to Confederation. Macdonald saw the weaknesses of their creation, not least in the bloody civil war that had just racked their great republic. Chief amongst those defects was a constitution that gave too much power to the states and too little to the federal government, with the result that the center could not hold. To make a nation out of British North Americans, therefore, he knew that he had to create for them the instruments of nationhood and not merely project into the future the local and parochial interests of the individual colonies. Accordingly, he defended the idea of a powerful national government and parliament that would represent and unite all Canadians and be the instrument of the construction of a national consciousness, a national pride, and national action. He had to compromise and accept the creation of provinces independent of Ottawa. But if you read the actual text of the British North America Act, subsequently and prosaically renamed the Constitution Act 1867, he clearly won his point, and Ottawa was intended to be by far the more powerful agent of Canadians' political will. Ignorant and busybody judges, along with Ottawa's political timidity, including in the face of separatist provocations in Quebec, have watered down Sir John A's wine. But even in that insipid tipple, you can still detect the full-bodied flavor that fueled this man and his vision. And those politicians who have known how to tap into Canadians' desire to rise above petty regional squabbles and articulate what Canada could be if it transcended parochialism, have often found themselves richly rewarded. That is one of Macdonald's lurking legacies. But there was more. He didn't just want a nation. He wanted a nation that would preserve and promote a way of life that he believed had proven its superiority over all others. That meant embracing a society of freedom. Peace, order, and good government are not boring and uninspiring. They are the wellspring of progress. The Constitution, similar in principle to that of the United Kingdom, promised by the British North America Act, was one based on the freedom of the individual, limited government, an independent judiciary, the rule of law, and a powerful civil society. Those who think the Charter introduced rights into Canada fail to grasp how deeply infused our founding institutions were with those values, thanks in large part to Macdonald. 
Removing monuments to Sir John isn't merely a poor and mean-spirited way to honor his exemplary contribution to Canada. It is an impossible task for we, all Canadians, and the country we love, are his greatest monument. He lives on in us. I'm Brian Lee Crowley for the Macdonald Laurier Institute.